All right, well, welcome everybody. Uh, this is session five of the class Understanding the Forerunner Call. And the title of this uh, session is uh, The Spirit and the Power of Elijah. Um, so let's start out by reading the theme verse that we've been looking at for uh, really three sessions now. Uh, uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. Uh, and he will turn back many of the sons of Israel to the Lord their God. This is speaking about John the Baptist, as you know. He will turn back many of the sons of Israel to the Lord their God. And it is he, John the Baptist, who will go as a forerunner before him, before Christ, in the spirit and the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children, the disobedient to the attitude of the righteous, so as to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Um, and so as you know, in session three, we looked at uh, the concept of turning people back to Christ, that we've kind of been dissecting that scripture passage. We looked in session three about the, uh, the overall idea of turning people back to the uh, to the person of Christ. And then we looked in session four at the concept of making ready a people prepared for the Lord, to make them ready for the end times and to make them ready uh, for eternity. And so we want to continue this will be the last session as we deal with this specifically, this passage of Scripture. But in there, this we want to look at the spirit and the power uh, of Elijah. So uh, we want to get into that. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the importance of the spirit and the power uh, of Elijah. Uh, it's a very uh, important uh, concept that goes along with the forerunner call. Uh, if you begin to look at the uh, at the scriptures, in fact, before I do that, though, I want to just make a couple points, uh, three points about the about the spirit and the power of Elijah to kind of give a make sure we understand it, and then well, I want to give some reports about the importance of it. But uh, when we look at the spirit and power of Elijah, we look at the forerunners in the spirit and the power of Elijah. Forerunners is the function. Forerunner is a function, one that goes before uh, the group and then brings them along. And we've talked a lot about that in prior sessions. But the spirit and power of Elijah is the empowerment uh, over the, the forerunner call. So the, the forerunner call defines the function, whereas the spirit and the power of Elijah really talks about the, uh, the anointing or the empowerment that, em, that gives, that allows forerunners to have results, to make results. And we'll talk more about that uh, in a little bit. Uh, second, the spirit and the power of Elijah. I want to make sure we understand this. I think everybody here in the room would understand it, but I want to make sure we're clear on it. The spirit and the power of Elijah refers to an anointing upon people and not to the, the reincarnation of Elijah. We're not talking about Elijah literally coming back. There, you know, Elijah was there. But the, on John the Baptist, the spirit and power, the anointing that was on Elijah was also released upon John the Baptist. And as we looked at in some prior sessions, the spirit and the power of Elijah will be released upon the end time church. It's clear in the scriptures that that will be released upon the end time church. Uh, and then the third thing I want to make sure we're clear about is that we're not talking about a different spirit. We're not talking about the Holy Spirit that we're given uh, at salvation. Uh, and then there's a different spirit that comes on us called the spirit and the power of Elijah. Really, it's, it's better described as a gifting or as an anointing for a specific purpose. Uh, it's much like when you talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, you talk about the gifts of the Spirit and you see that, you know, there's the gift of healing, there's a word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, there's faith, there's uh, works, of, um, there's miracles and all those types of things. And so you see some people, because of their function, some people uh, function more strongly in one of those uh, manifestations, even though they're all acts available to all of us, there's some function more strongly than others. Well, the the spirit and the power of Elijah is much like that. It's a particular dimension of the whole work of the Holy Spirit granted to uh, a group of people who are called as forerunners for a specific function, to give us the power, to give us the, uh, the fulfillment, or give us the accomplishment, so that, the, so that when we speak, there's an anointing that goes with it. So, amen? Do you get that? Um, so... 
those are three points I wanted to make as we get going, but uh, it's very important, it's very important that we not only take up the forerunner call, but that we receive the impartation of the Spirit and the power of Elijah. Uh, there, there are basically four scripture verses or passages that we've been looking at uh, over the, uh, the course of this class so far, uh, and I'll just read them quickly. And the point I want to make with this is that when you read these scripture verses, they, they all kind of speak of a certain function of the forerunner call, but they all, the focus is not on the function as much as it's on the anointing of the Spirit and the power of Elijah. And the point I'm trying to make is that this is, this is emphasizing why it's very important that as forerunners, which we are as a fellowship in which this school is equipping us to be forerunners, that we, that we also receive the Spirit and the power uh, of Elijah. So let's look at these. Um, Again, we've looked at all of them before, but I want you to look at them this time with a sense uh, of, the, of the anointing of the Spirit and the power of Elijah. From Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 and 6, it says, uh, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers, lest I come to strike the earth with a curse. So that, we talked about this in session two, I believe it was, that <clears throat> this is an end time call. This is speaking about that God's going to send Elijah uh, at, before the second coming of Christ. And session two, I think it is, deals with, with all of that. But remember, look what he said. He didn't say, I'm going to send forerunners. He said, I'm going to send Elijah. I'm going to send Elijah before that. So again, the spirit and the power of Elijah. The second one is Luke 1, 16 and 17, which we just read a few minutes ago, so I won't read it again. But he's talking about forerunners in the spirit and the power of Elijah. Now, you know this from other sessions that the word forerunner is really not even actually uh, in the literal Greek text there. It's a editor's insert that explains this call. Now, it's important, and I think it's accurate, but only the New American Standard uh, has that idea of the forerunner in there. So the emphasis is on the spirit and the power of Elijah. Uh, then in another verse that we use, and, uh, and he, Jesus answered and said, Elijah is coming and will restore all things. But I say to you that Elijah already came. Now I won't read all of the verse. But the point, the main point, Jesus is talking about the second coming when he's going to send once again Elijah. He's talking about the spirit and the power of Elijah. And again, he talks about the function of restoration, which is a function of the forerunner call of restoring all things. But again, the emphasis is not on the restoration as much as it's on the spirit and the power of Elijah, sending Elijah upon to the earth for that. And then the fourth one is from Revelation uh, chapter 11, verse 3 through 6, talking about the two witnesses. And um, again, I won't read all this because it's fairly lengthy. But one of those, most people think, is Elijah, that God's going to send Elijah to Jerusalem before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord. And, and so the point I'm making is it's not enough just to say, I believe and I know that we need forerunners. We also need, as much as, that, as important as it is that function, we also need the anointing of the spirit and the power of Elijah uh, over our lives. It's crucial. Um, I've really seen this over the years, and, I, and I'm not sure I can even <clears throat> point to specific examples but I've seen the distinction between those who are functioning as forerunners without that anointing of the spirit and the power of Elijah in contrast to those who have functioned as forerunners, but they've received the impartation of the spirit and the power of Elijah. There's just an extra kick or an extra uh, umph on those who have that uh, no, a, a, an extra authority over their life in their ministry. Uh, and so it's really, really important. Uh, the one thing that 
Now, maybe in, may, the one thing that convinced me absolutely that this is real and is needed is when uh, I received that impartation. Uh, Donna had mentioned earlier about an old man who came, and I think pretty much all of us know him, but he started coming, uh, from, he lived in Australia, and started coming to us in 1996. And he would come every year or two, uh, some years every year, and sometimes every other year. And uh, he spoke about all these things. He spoke about forerunner call. He spoke about becoming a house of prayer. He spoke about uh, the spirit and the power of Elijah, the man-child of Revelation chapter 12. He spoke about a lot of different things. Uh, but then I think it was right around the year 2000, uh, he felt the Lord saying, that I want, the Lord wanted him to release an impartation of the spirit and power of Elijah over me. And I was pretty excited about it. I didn't know anything about it. Uh, I said, but it sounds pretty, pretty glamorous to be, you know, get the anointing of the Spirit and the power of Elijah. It sounded pretty exciting, so I was all for it. And so he did that uh, one Sunday and during the worship service. Uh, he did that, and uh, I wish I could say, boy, everything went great uh, from there. But almost immediately, this was kind of the end of the service, and we went home, we were, uh, and they were staying at our house. And so we went, we went home, and on the way home, I started hearing, oh, he's a false prophet. This is not real. This is not, this, this is not it. And by the time we got, I mean, we lived five minutes from there at that point, in from here at that point in time. And by the time we got home, I, can, I was convinced he was absolutely a false prophet and this was not real and I wanted no part of it. And not only that, I, I pulled away, you know, our wives were fixing us a sandwich for lunch and I pulled away and wouldn't even talk to him. And you can imagine the tension in the house when all this was happening. It's like, he was like ready to crawl in a hole, I know. But it was interesting, that morning before he went to the church, the Lord gave him uh, 1 Kings chapter 19, where Jezebel came after Elijah and brought him into depression and all that. And he shared that with me, and that, that's when I realized that all I was thinking was not right. What it was was that because it was real, Jezebel wanted to come, and, and that spirit of Jezebel and the, the queen of heaven wanted to come and make sure I did not get that. So finally I saw it, and uh, I repented of it, and, uh, you know, I got that anointing. And I know I, I had it because it began to cha make changes in my, in my heart, in my attitude. It began to increase revelation. Uh, about the bride, revelation about the end times, revelation about uh, a variety of topics. And it convinced me, uh, you know, it, it was funny now, although even after that, every year Noah would bring it up, and it's kind of embarrassing. Okay, will you please be quiet about that, you know? <laughs> but it's funny now, but at the time it wasn't funny, but what the Lord showed me was that this thing really is real. It really is real, especially over time as that anointing worked in me first and then into other people. And so it's really, that's what I want to emphasize right now. It's really important. If you want to be a forerunner, and the world needs forerunners right now, desperately, desperately needs them. And that's, that need is only going to increase over the, over the decades or whatever time we have before the Lord returns. If you want to be a forerunner, you also need the spirit and the power of Elijah imparted over your life. Now, there's a call and there's a commissioning. We'll get into that in some later sessions. But you need that. We all need both the call, the functional call of the forerunner, but we also need the anointing of the spirit and the power of Elijah. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, I want to talk, I want to explain it now. I want to talk first about the spirit of Elijah, and then we'll talk about the power of Elijah. 
the spirit of Elijah is the anointing upon forerunners which creates the inward desire to prepare the way for the Lord's second coming. It creates an inward desire for that. Uh, you, you know, we'll, we'll look a couple of scriptures here. You can look at um, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 21. This is talking about Elijah. Uh, and Elijah came near to all the people and said, How long will you hesitate between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. Now, and listen to the response. But the people did not answer him a word. That blessed him, I know. <laughs> then Elijah said to the people, I alone am left as a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. You, you can just kind of feel the depression coming over Elijah. Now, he didn't quit. He didn't stop. That's where he had the confrontation uh, with the prophets of Baal and all that. But you can feel the burden. You can just kind of read between the lines and you feel the burden uh, in, in, uh, in his heart. Uh, you feel this desire for people to turn back to God. You feel this desire for them to, to just say, I want Yahweh. I want to abandon Baal. I want to abandon Asherah worship. I want, I want God. But see, they, that didn't happen. You see, you feel his heart. You feel his heart. And the same is true with, with John the Baptist, you know, who operated in the spirit and the power of Elijah. You, you feel that with, with him. Uh, you feel that with John the Baptist as well. I mean, he went into the, he went into the wilderness uh, to spend his life in ministry, uh, to ministering to people, uh, ministering to people, calling them to make themselves ready for that. He, the, he had this heart for, to turn people back to God. He had this heart to make people ready for the coming of Christ. He had this heart for this. And this is, the, this is a, one of the evidences and one of the things that the anointing of the Spirit and the power of Elijah will do. It will give you a heart desire, an inward desire in your heart that burns with passion, especially as it grows. Uh, you know, before that, uh, I, you know, it was an interesting idea, but as I was received that impartation, especially over the years, that, that burden grew, and now it's just a tremendous burden in my heart of, of where the status of the church is. The church is in a major mess globally around the world, and God wants to raise up an end-time bride, a prepared bride that will be ready for the coming of the Lord and will stand strong and won't fall away and all the things that, uh, that we, we talk about. But, you know, you get this desire where it just overwhelms you. That becomes your narrow focus. That's the anointing of the spirit of Elijah that gives you that desire. And the second part of that, which is pretty much the, uh, just a different aspect of the same thing, is that it gives you, it produces a deep burden in the heart of forerunners to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. When you get this, the forerunner receives this anointing, the forerunner ministry ceases to be a job or a nice little thing or an interesting idea. It becomes a burden of your heart, a deep burden of your heart. See, when, the, when Elijah was alone, left alone as a prophet, you know, we read that scripture a minute ago, you can feel not only the desire, but that burden where his heart was breaking over the people. And say, so we need that. All the students of the, of the uh, forerunner school, we, we need that burden in our heart, if we're really going to be forerunners. Uh, we need that in, the, in this church. We need that call. Um, so the spirit of Elijah, that's what we've been talking about. The spirit of Elijah will give us a desire to turn the hearts of the people back to Christ, and it'll give us a burden where that's not taking place to begin to increase and, and take and change and bring transformation into that. So that's the spirit of Elijah. Now the power of Elijah. Let's talk about the power of Elijah. Um, 
the forerunners will operate in the power of Elijah, not just the spirit of Elijah. The spirit of Elijah gives you the desire, gives you the burden. But the power of Elijah is the anointing that produces results. So hear me on that. The power of Elijah, you know, we, have, we need the spirit and power of Elijah. The power of Elijah is what produces the results. You know, in 2 Corinthians, when Jesus was talking to uh, Paul, and Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians about his encounter with Jesus, Paul had prayed for a, for a breakthrough in a, in a certain area, and Jesus said, My grace is sufficient for you. My power is perfected in your weakness. Uh, and then in the same, same book, he wrote that we are a treasure, we have a, we have a treasure in an earthen vessel. In other words, we're just an earthen vessel, uh, but we have the treasure within us, which is the person of Christ, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ. And that Spirit of Christ within us is the power uh, to bring transformation, the power to bring change. And it, whether even not even thinking or considering the forerunner call, it's the, it's the power source to try and change our own lives. It's the source that changes our own lives. It's the source that ministers through us uh, to other people. Uh, and so that's what the power of Elijah is. The power of Elijah is that anointing that produces the results. Uh, it was the anointing that allowed Elijah to call fire down from heaven. It was, a, the, anoint, it was the, the spirit that was on Elijah's life. It was a, the spirit that was on Elisha's life that brought the results, that brought the change. And even John the Baptist, just think about John the Baptist. Here he was, he ate honey and locust, he wore camel skin, he ministered in this dry desert, and thousands of people flocked to hear him speak. Now, no, that can't be a man doing that. <laughs> if Pastor Brian went into the wilderness of Paulding County, and he, he went in the wilderness of Paulding County, and he said, dressed in camel's hair, come out and listen to me preach. <laughs> if he had the spirit and power of Elijah on it, it probably worked, though. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't do it, I know. But there was no McDonald's there. There was no fast food. There was no Starbucks coffee. There was nothing there, you know. And people came out. And even the leaders came out to see what he was doing. Now, he confronted them. Uh, but that's the power. That's the power of Elijah, the spirit and the power of Elijah. It's what brings the results. Uh, you, you know, I mean, preaching to me is one of the most foolish things in the world. You can preach to a group of people, and they can think, okay, it's almost 12 here. Let's get this over with, you know. But yet, God uses it in all of its weakness to bring transformation into people's lives. It's the spirit and the power of Elijah. Uh, and so forerunners need this. Forerunners need, not, they need the spirit to have that desire and burden, but they need the power to bring the results. Uh, you know, without the power of the Holy Spirit, we can speak the most profound things in the world and it does, nothing happens. But with the power, Spirit and the power of Elijah, we can speak even in our weakness, even in, in things that we think is going nowhere, and God produces transformation. It's the Spirit and the power of Elijah. Now, one aspect of this, though, that we need to be clear on is that the power of Elijah may or it may not uh, produce uh, signs and wonders and miracles. You know, when you hear it, first hear it, you know, when no one wanted to pray that on me, I thought, well, that sounds pretty exciting. You know, power of Elijah, raise people from the dead, heal the sick, cast out demons, do this, do that. Sounds pretty exciting. Uh, but the power of Elijah may do that. I mean, if you look at the life of Elijah, if you look at the life of Elisha, you look at their lives, there were quite a number of miracles, especially Elisha, a lot of miracles over, over their life. But if you look at John the Baptist, you know, it's even said of him that he did no miracles and no signs, you know, those types 
of miracles. Yet, it, Jesus said of him that it, there wasn't a prophet uh, up to that time that was as great as him. Um, <clears throat> so, it may produce signs and wonders. It may produce miracles. Uh, it, with that on your, but don't go into it believing that it's going to do that. What it will do, what it will do, is it will make you a, an effective voice. It will make you an effective voice to bring transformation uh, into uh, the lives of people. You know, it's interesting. I was baptized in the Holy Spirit in 1983, so it's been a while. Um, and we started the church in 91, and we began to pursue this forerunner call in like early, 93, 94, something like that, especially in 96. The first 10 years of me being baptized in the Holy Spirit, I mean, the Lord used Donna and I in some really powerful ways in terms of healing people. I mean, we had a, there was a lot of, we were in a Baptist church, and there were, uh, but we were blessed with a pastor who was open to heal, the gift of healing in the Baptist church. And, uh, you know, we saw, we saw people heal. We would hear, uh, hear uh, God's voice, go do this. And, uh, you know, were people coming out of comas and people that were on their deathbed being, uh, you know, raised up and different, different things, uh, uh, you know, getting words of knowledge and then uh, that, People were going to have surgery. They didn't know about it. The next, and the, and the, we, they didn't know that we knew. We didn't know. And, the, and God healed them. They didn't have to have the surgery. I mean, you know, we got to the point when we started the church, we thought every time we prayed that God was going to heal whoever we prayed for. But then what happened was as we began to move in this call, God just lifted that healing anointing over our lives. I mean, we had more miracles uh, happened through us in the first 10 years of uh, being baptized in the Holy Spirit than we have since then. In fact, when I forgot the year, but I wrote the book Learning to Hear God's Voice, and I had shared a lot of stories in there, and all, you know about healing. A lot of them were about healing and stuff like that. But um, all, almost all of those stories were before the forerunner call. And after that, we've ministered much less in the power of healing, but, um, you know, especially in Africa, the Lord has used our voice to bring transformation. So the point I want to make is the power of Elijah is to bring transformation in people, for your voice to be effective. It may or may not include things that we normally associate with power, like healing and, and prophetic ministry and all of those types of things. But we need both. We need the spirit of Elijah for the heart, the desire, the burden, and we need the power that, for God to, to take our feeble words and to bring transformation through them. We need that. Um, now, I want to go, and I'll go through these quickly, but I want to go through several... Um, indications that this spirit will produce. And I want, you to, I want you to test yourself on this. Is, are these things characteristic of my life? Uh, are they not? Uh, if, they're character, if they're characteristic of your life, then this is probably a, an indication that you've received that impartation of the spirit and the power of Elijah. If they're not, then it's probably an indication that you need to uh, pursue it, want it, desire it, and possibly even receive it through a laying on of hands, uh, but to receive that spirit and that power of Elijah. So here, here they are. The first one is that the spirit and the power of Elijah changes the life of the forerunner. The spirit and the power of Elijah will change the life of the forerunner. When I received that impartation in, 90, in around 2000 or so, it made a big change. After that is when I began to, to grow, increasingly grow in burden, and increasingly grow with a desire to see people come into that fullness of that relationship uh, with Christ, that fullness of, that, of all the things. It became uh, related to, to following Him. It, it increased the burden to prepare people for the end times, to prepare people for eternity. Uh, it, it changed me, and it will change you. Things like 
the bride, will, uh, uh, preparing the bride, preparing people for eternity, will, become, will begin to consume you. That's a sign. That's the first sign that you have received that impartation of the spirit and the power of Elijah. Uh, somewhat similar to this, the spirit of Elijah is the anointing that equips forerunners with the fresh revelation needed to prepare the way for the Lord's coming and to make ready a people uh, prepared for the Lord. Gives you fresh revelation. That really, that will really happen. You know, things like a fresh revelation of the scriptures related to the bride, fresh revelation of the scriptures related uh, to the end times, fresh revelation of the scriptures related to eternity, all of those things will begin to change in your life. It'll give you, it'll give you fresh revelation. That's part of the anointing that comes with that impartation is it begins to really touch you in, the, in your heart in terms of seeing things of God differently so that you can be a voice. So you have to, you have to have that if you're going to be a voice that brings change. You've got to really believe that. I know when we go to Africa, you know, like they've said, and we've said a number of times that most of the guys say that about 80% of the church there is prosperity gospel. But when we speak a totally different gospel to what the prosperity gospel is, they, they, they see it, and they're changed, and they're touched by it. But see, that comes from that anointing. That comes from that impart, impartation of that spirit over our lives uh, to be touched and changed. Uh, that. So fresh revelation will come. The next point, the, the spirit and power of Elijah empowers trans transformation in the church. Transformation in the church. It'll not only change you as a forerunner, it'll also change, uh, it's, what, it's the anointing that brings the change in the church. You know, we've seen this, we've been ministering this for a number of years in Africa and, and here as well, and it brings about uh, significant change in the hearts of the people so that what they used to pray, place as a high priority, there's now something different, Christ and and. Uh, in the things related to a relationship with them. From the external to the internal. From prosperity to uh, exalting the man Christ. To having everything that God wants to give us to having Christ having everything uh, he wants. We want him to have. So it brings change. It brings transformation uh, in the church. The spirit in the next one. The spirit and the power of Elijah empowers forerunners to stand strong against the forces that would oppose the emergence of the church into God's eternal purpose. You know, as well as I know, that there are forces that are coming strong against the church. You know, the thing that Brian talked about and that's going on right now uh, in California where the governor is saying, you can't sing. You go to church, but you can't sing. I mean, that's just one little example but the spirit of the, the Antichrist uh, system, the Antichrist spirit, the, the harlot, all those, there is a major push to shut down the church, to silence the church. But the spirit and the power of Elijah is that anointing that causes you to stand strong against that. We saw it with Elijah. What did he do? He did not cave when the people didn't respond, he did not cave. He stood strong against the prophets of Ahab and the uh, prophets of Baal and the prophets of the Asherah. He stood strong there. John the Baptist, he stood strong against the religious leaders when the Pharisees and the Sadducees came out to see him. When the, uh, even when Herod was doing the things that he was doing, he stood strong against those things. And so this spirit will cause you to be strong, very much needed in intercession and very much needed as a voice in, in ministry and proclamation, so many, so many ways that is needed. So that will be one of the ways you will see what will happen when that spirit comes over, over you. The spirit and power of Elijah will be transferred from one generation 
to the next until the Lord returns. I want to, I want to make sure we understand this. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of fads uh, in the church, over the, especially the charismatic church. You know, there are a lot of fads, this thing, this move, you know, the different things, and I won't mention any of them. Uh, won't take the time to do that, but there have been a lot of fads that have come and gone. Well, this is not a fad. This is not a fad that's going to come and going to go. It will, it, it has been released in the earth upon the church, and it will continue to be released. It will continue to grow until the Lord returns. You see that clearly in the life of Elijah. What did Elijah do? Elijah operated, obviously, in the spirit and power of Elijah. He, he, Elisha received his mantle, his spiritual son received his mantle, and then even Elisha's spiritual sons received that same anointing. In fact, it was one of the spiritual sons of Elisha who ushered in Jehu, who is a picture and a type of Jesus at his second coming. So this, this anointing will be on the church, maybe a remnant, uh, but I believe it'll grow. I believe it will grow until the Lord comes. I'm not, I have no idea how long. It could be multiple generations. I don't know. But whatever the time frame, it will be here. It will be upon the church. It is transferable and, and impartable, uh, if that's a word, from until the Lord returns. And then I think the final point. The spirit and power of Elijah is a specific anointing given for a specific purpose upon the fivefold ministry and to the larger body of believers. Let me read that again. The spirit and power of Elijah is a specific anointing given for a specific purpose upon both the fivefold ministry and the larger body of believers. Now let me let me just talk about fivefold leaders. You know, the fivefold are the apostle, the prophet, the pastor, the teacher, the evangelist, the fivefold. Now, if if one is an apostle, there this doesn't make them not an apostle. They're still an apostle. If one is a prophet, they're still a prophet. But what the spirit and power of Elijah does, it adds a specific dimension to their apostolic or prophetic or pastoral, whatever, to their specific call. It doesn't change their call. They still function in an apostolic calling. They still do that. But it gives a specific call, a specific focus, a specific purpose uh, to that calling to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. I mean, there are apostles and there are prophets who, who, have, who, who do not have that a call. But there's some who do. And that's what this anointing will do. So it doesn't change that. Um, and it doesn't change uh, your gifting as a, if you're not a fivefold, and your gifting as a believer. Uh, you may still be gifted and called as an intercessor, assessor, or as a worshiper, or as a teacher, or whatever the gifting may be. You still call that way, but it adds a specific dimension to that call, which is very needed, very needed. Uh, you know, one of the things that is on my heart with this school, the Forerunner School, uh, is I, I want to raise up, this is kind of the, 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 what the Lord has given me, I want to raise up a company of Forerunner missionaries and a network of Forerunner mission bases in the, in the world. That's my desire for this last leg of my life. I want to, I, that is my desire, to raise up a company of forerunner missionaries and a, a network of forerunner mission bases in America, uh, in Africa, and wherever else the Lord might open up opportunities. Europe, I want to do it in Europe. Um, the other thing he's spoken is that we need... We need forerunners functioning as messengers. Now, we've talked a good bit about that. I think we know what that means. Messengers who speak the word, the voice into the church. Forerunners as messengers. Forerunners as master builders who, who 
once people say yes to the, me to the messenger, then build in a spiritual environment that facilitates the message of the messenger. Forerunners as master builders. Forerunners as intercessors and spiritual warriors. See, the, the, this spirit and power of Elijah is needed. You say, well, you may say, well, I'm never going to preach. I don't need it. If you're an intercessor, you need it. You need that anointing because it, it, functions, it affects and functions through intercession and spiritual warfare as well. And, for, and forerunners as worshipers, worship leaders and worshipers. It, it adds a d distinctive dimension to whatever our call is. Evangelism as well. Whatever the call is, it, it, it adds a distinctive uh, function to that. It doesn't change our basic what we are, but it adds that burden, that call, that desire, that anointing to bring transformation in these last days and in preparation for them and for eternity as well. And so just to close with this, I'll have a prayer in just a minute. Just to close with this, I, I urge you, if you're in the Forerunner School, it's not only about learning new truths. It's about receiving the impartation, however it comes, from the Holy Spirit so that your heart is changed and so that, you're, so that the Spirit empowers you for effective results. And so that's my desire for everybody who will be a part of the school and for everybody who hears this as well, to, to operate as a forerunner in the spirit and the power of Elijah. Amen. 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 Let's just, uh, you can 